praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God for this new day. A week it has been learning from the book of Numbers and the story of Balaam. And today we want to continue the same story. As we say, the story continues. As the Lord continues revealing himself to us through these lessons of this week. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, because you give inspiration to your people. How we pray that you are going to open our minds, our thoughts, dear Lord, that you may fill us with your Holy Spirit, that even as we meditate upon these words, you will continue to inspire us and even give us new revelation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, the word that is going to read us is Numbers 23. And we'll be reading from verse 17 all the way to 28, 26, sorry. So he went to him and found him standing beside his offering with the princes of Moab. Barak asked him, what did the Lord say? Then he uttered his oracle. Elias Barak and listen, hear me, son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? I have received a command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot change it. No misfortune is seen in Jacob, no misery is observed in Israel. The Lord their God is with them. The shout of the king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. They have the strength of a wild ox. There is no succory against Jacob, no divination against Israel. It will now be said of Jacob and of Israel, see what God has done. The people rise like a lioness. They louse themselves like a lion that does not rest till he devours his prey and drinks the blood of his victims. Then Balak said to Balaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. Balaam answered, Did I not tell you I must do whatever the Lord said? <laughs> Did I tell you not? Mm -hmm. yeah? So he still stands, mm -hmm. even as much as uh, Balak is trying to push him to mm -hmm. do uh, contrary to the will of God. Mm -hmm. And that is the lesson I'd like us to learn from today. That first, Almighty God has made an irrevocable commitment to establish the Jews as his people. Yes. And even as the days are going, Balaam has no choice mm -hmm. but to say it. But I'd like us to go a little bit back eh? yeah. before he reached to this point where he was giving these words. Mm. So he has been told, go, but I'll tell you what to say. Yeah. Then what happens? <laughs> uh, uh, it's very interesting that, that um, God uh, gives uh, Baram the permission to go. Yet he had spoken to him and told him not to go because he had already, even before he tells God what Balak wanted, God knew, and that is why he's speaking to him. And he says that he's supposed to go and curse the children of Israel. And he's been told, you cannot curse them. And even though God is allowing him to go, he's not... He, he should have known the mind of God because this is a prophet of God being gifted by God that God never changes his mind as we have read in the word he is not a man that he will change what God has said today what God said yesterday will be the same thing that he said uh, next year when God says that this is a sin and you know, with the modernity, my brother and my sister, mm. we have tried to come around some of the issues mm. yes. and we've tried to modernize mm -hmm. what the Word of God says. Mm. Mm -hmm. And we've come up with, uh, you know, uh, trying to go round and round to justify sin. Mm. The Word of God, let me use just this as an example. The word of God is very clear about people not being drunk. Mm -hmm. But what are we doing today? We are saying we can take wine. After all, Jesus turned water into wine in the corner of Gary. Mm -hmm. yes. But you know, even if it was done that way, are we uh, taking it in that particular case whereby this was a ceremony? Yeah. But people are going to clubs to mm -hmm. take wine. Mm -hmm. They are taking it to their homes 
and putting it in the fridge. And young children are getting addicted. Mm. And so God is not man that he can change. When he says you cannot allow yourself to be drunk, you, the only thing you can be drunk of is the Holy Spirit. And so this guy, he's on a donkey. Mm. And the donkey can see what the man of God cannot see. Yes. You know that was very, very profound. It's for me. so profound and it's so humbling that I can be walking and uh, calling myself a woman of God, but a donkey can see that I'm on the long path, but myself, people are trying to tell me to see I don't go through this route, and I'm still headed there. The donkey can see there is a sword, I'm supposed, I'm about to be destroyed, but I can't stop because of pride and that lure yeah. from the enemy mm, of what I'm going choice. to get. Mm. Say anything, I can give it to mm. you. And you know the most interesting thing is that he's not seeing. And the donkey is actually seeing the angel of the Lord. What does yes. he do? He picks a whip and mm -hmm. starts whipping this donkey. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he's not even sensitive to what is happening. The first time, the second time, until the last time the donkey now had to stick. Because now he has reached a point where he is actually completely clouded. Hmm? Mm -hmm. His mind is completely clouded by what is uh, before him. The things that you have been promised yeah. by Balak yeah. at the cost and at the expense of his life and the words that God has That is him. the same thing that is happening with the churches today. Mm -hmm. We are trying to justify the sin with uh, sometimes we look for people who are elite, like medical profession. We come to things like gay marriage. Yes. It's completely against the word of God. But since we want to justify it, we call, call it human it, rights. Yeah. <laughs> and we say these people can't help, it's within their DNA. Mm -hmm. DNA didn't start just uh, with the 20th century. DNA was there since the creation. It is actually a fashion because this is why God uh, destroyed right. Sodom and Gomorrah. God. Yeah. And then also, even before you finish on that, Dr. you know, I'm just reminded of uh, these miracle babies. Yes. I mean, and uh, so many other things that we are being shown on, uh, you know, television as miracles. Only later alone, for it to come out as it is outright crime yes. being done in the name of God because of the ruler for money. Mm. You know, all these things is because of money. It is the bottom line. And why we want to use the word of God to justify it. Yeah. And the blindness we get when we go for it, we don't see something that is open. Once the God uttered that don't go, mm -hmm. yeah. even the angel had, and they took sword because they have the authority from God. Mm -hmm. They are defenders of God. Mm -hmm. When Satan sinned in heaven, who defended? God didn't even bother. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the angels were there to fight. So you can imagine this guy is going because he feels justified now. And he is going to sin and do against God's word. That is the same sin that blinds us when we try to justify a sin to be true. The funny thing is that the sword doesn't, is not taken out of our way. Uh -huh. We have to face judgment every time we sin against God's word. You know, I'm also thinking about the Balaam again uh, ahead there after he still goes ahead and God tells him what to say to every of those groups. When you read on in chapter 25, you see him now, he's the one advising Balak. Yes. <laughs> 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 you know, he has turned from the camp of God. He has started giving Balak strategies on how to finish the children of Israel. You know, these ones, if you want them to be cursed, do this and that completely different from the man that he was. Uh -huh. And remember that he had already been given enough warning yes. as he was going forward. He had been given warning by God, don't go. He had been given the warning by uh, the donkey and still he went on. And not even just going, he went on even to give Balak strategies uh -huh. on how to defeat the children of God. You know, get, get them involved in morality and so on. And you, you can see a man who had started off in a different scenario, ending up completely down, in, down there in the... In As the, our sister was reading, mm -hmm. the things God is defending against Israel. Mm -hmm. There is no sorcery, no witchcraft. Mm -hmm. no. The, all those things, 
God is defending them that no enemy can attack them even through them. We who are adapted to the kingdom of God enjoy the same rights. Mm -hmm. But what do we do? We open those doors for going to the rich doctors. They don't come to us. Yeah. We are the ones who go there. Things we are protected against, we now open the living. The more we entertain the same and compromise, we open the living for the enemy. And that is why Balaam was giving him some tricks he can use mm. so that these people by themselves, because God is protecting them, mm. unless they open up those doors so that the enemy can attack them, they can't be attacked. So many other times we take ourselves to be attacked by the enemy on things God has put protection against us. Mm -hmm. So if we maintain the word of God and follow it to the letter, he has totally covered us all up. Amen. You know the spirit of God is just ministering to me even as we continue to share and I'm wondering uh, how many times do we uh, the donkey is speaking or the donkey is trying to avoid the edge of God with a sword and we are busy hitting it until the donkey now speaks and says <laughs> you hit me three times and I'm just trying to save your life yes. and you find a lot of infighting in church mm -hmm. and this one is actually uh, you know you are a, a, a Christian who cannot see or listen to the servant of God. You are hitting the donkey that is preventing you to go to your destruction. Mm. Mm. And how unfortunate. Because when the servant of God allows you to have your way, and imagine you've won. Mm. Imagine you've just signed your death certificate. Yes. How sad for us Christians, because sometimes that is how uh, we've had so many functions for Christians. Mm. And people then go and form sects whereby they even uh, kill themselves plus yes. others. Yet they had been warned by servants of God, don't go this way, and the Lord is speaking uh, through a donkey. You know, it is so prophetic, and we really need to search deep within ourselves mm -hmm. and see which is the donkey which is speaking. And you know, we must uh, train our ears to, listen, to hear the donkey speaking. Because right. It's not normal for a donkey it's to speak. Mm -hmm. It's not normal. Mm -hmm. But when it speaks, it is because we have reached the ultimate. Mm -hmm. God cannot tolerate us anymore. And so if you don't listen to the donkey, there we go. Amen and amen. What a profound way to finish. Which donkey is speaking to you today? And are you seeing the angel of the Lord standing in front of the donkey? That is the word of God today, that he's throwing a challenge to all of us, that he is tends to keep us from destruction. And the word of God was said today that God is not a man that he should change his mind, that we listen and we learn to act on the word of God as it is, that he does not have to raise the donkey to speak on our behalf. Let us pray. God Almighty, thank you for your loving kindness upon us and even for this new day. Father, we pray that you may make our ears sensitive to you and our eyes sensitive to your vision and your word as you speak to us each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.